Hello learners, welcome to the NIOS studios. I am Benita Sen, I am a children's author and storyteller. Now today we are going to discuss language development through creative methods. If I ask you, which route will you choose, creative or boring? Your choice will be clear, I believe. You will go for the creative method. A child tries to communicate through different body nuances right from birth. We all know that the child cries for food when she or he is hungry or the child wails when the stomach hurts. Now these are all methods of communication. Uh, in fact, when the child hurts, the child may draw the legs up towards the stomach and the doctor might ask you, uh, you know, have you noticed that when the child cries in the evening after a meal that the legs come up and uh, towards the stomach, that could be colic. So these are bo body nuances and body language. As a child grows up, the child starts experimenting with sounds, later with written communication. This process, if you think of it, is graded and it's more or less structured. Now, how is it graded, you may ask? For instance, although we take it for granted, a newborn child cannot write. So the journey to writing has to take in the necessary steps on the way, like developing listening skills, fine muscle development and coordination, eye-hand coordination, and finally, letter perception. We are all language teachers. The community is an important aspect in the language development of a child because a child spends a good amount of time with the community, not just with the parents. So, you as a neighbor or part of the extended family may have a very important role to play in the language development of the child. Why? Especially because the parents may not have the time or the awareness to develop language skills in a child. Let me give you an example. This has happened recently to somebody I know and uh, this young couple have a two-year-old child. They live abroad in a country where another language is spoken. They have, they hold good jobs. So they go out to work and they leave the child in the safe custody of a caregiver who is a local lady. She does not know English as such and she certainly does not know Hindi. As a result, the child was almost locked into his own world. He came to the age of two and he was hardly speaking. Of course, the parents got a little alarmed and they took the child to a doctor. The doctor examined the child thoroughly and said, clinically, I don't see any reason why your child is not talking yet. However, it could be that the child is lacking the inputs. So, the parents have brought the child to India and the mother has taken leave for a year. She is in that extended family with her parents and grandparents and the cousins and the hustle bustle. And believe it or not, the child has started speaking and very, very fast because it was all bottled inside him. He was just waiting for the inputs. Now, what is language? Language can be of different kinds. But here today, we are hinting at verbal language. What is language actually? It is a way to communicate thought from one person to another person. We all know that we are social beings. We need to convey our thoughts to the other person throughout our waking life. Now look at the letter H here and see what you can communicate with it. You add a little line diagonally across and it almost becomes H for horse. There are different types of communication. Language 
can be of different kinds. Imagine we mean the word I. It can be sign language. You could simply point out to your I. Another way to communicate the word I would be to draw an I. You draw it like this and then you put the center so the other person knows you mean the I. Yet another way would be to use a sound word and say I in English or Aak in Hindi or Chok in Bangla, Netra in Sanskrit and so on. A fourth way to communicate the word I would be to write it E, Y, E. Some words can also be represented by toys in their shape like say a rubber duck when you want to say duck. Now, in India we are fortunate to have dance forms where we have our own vocabulary. So if you want to, these are called the mudras and if you want to use the mudra for I, you may even say this. But we have to learn to interpret that when the other person says it and the dancer has to learn which hand movement exactly means I. So there is a learning process involved. The importance of communication is never lost on us. Sign language and graphic language or art are easier than the spoken word. If you are not a very good illustrator, you may contend that. You, but think of yourself in a country whose language you do not know. But that could mean different kinds of drinking. You want water. What if the other person understood you want a drink of milk and give you a sachet of milk? No, that's not what you meant. Then you could draw a glass of water like this. If that fails you, you will have to search online for the word for water in that particular language. Now, you've got the word, but is your pronunciation correct? If it is a little here or there, the person may not understand. So, then you have to find the written script for the word. We need to read a child's personality when we develop language skills. That will show you how creative you have got for a simple word. However, a child needs to expand her vocabulary to include more words so that she can string complete sentences. How long after all can we make do with one or two words? Because our thoughts get more and more complex. And then we have to string those few words in a sentence in the correct order. You can come up with creative ways to do that. Encourage a child to talk, even when you accept that some children will speak less than others. That is only natural. Some adults speak more than others. So it's only natural that some children will differ from the others in the rate, the pace or the number of words they speak. One way to do that is to make the child comfortable. This encourages the child to speak. One child may be comfortable at home. Another child may be comfortable and babbling away when a non-family member who is not very judgmental, like a teacher, asks him to speak. Another child may feel the same when the teacher lets her be for a few minutes. If the teacher says, OK, tell me about what you ate for breakfast, the child may feel nervous. But if the teacher said, uh, I may come back to you after a few minutes, think about what you have for, had for breakfast and tell me. Then perhaps a more shy child will be ready when her turn comes. The other may feel the same when the teacher lets her be for a few hours. So at the end of the day, a very introverted child may be a little more ready. The child has to learn to trust the environment before the child starts opening up verbally. It is up to you, whatever your role in society, to read and interpret the child you are dealing with and to find the best way to make the child 
comfortable. Thank you for being with us on this journey and see you on the other side. Thank you.